Hi, I'm Professor Caroline Moore. I'm a Professor of Urology at University College London, and I do a lot of work in prostate cancer, helping men to make decisions about whether to have treatment or not, and which treatment to have. And today I'm going to talk to you specifically about active surveillance. So active surveillance is suitable for those men who've got a low or intermediate risk prostate cancer, which doesn't need treating immediately, but may need treatment in the future. So typically when men are looking at the option of active surveillance, they've had a PSA blood test, often with their GP. This has prompted some investigations at the hospital, and that would usually be an MRI scan and then a biopsy after that. The biopsy is likely to show Gleason 3 plus 3 prostate cancer, so that's the lowest risk of prostate cancer, or Gleason 3 plus 4 prostate cancer, and that's the slightly uh, higher risk prostate cancer, but we call that at the low end of intermediate risk disease. Men choosing surveillance are usually fit for radical treatment and will usually have seen somebody to talk about that specifically in terms of surgery or radiotherapy. Very often men who choose surveillance are really keen to keep the sexual and urinary function that they've got at the moment. And they know that active surveillance gives them the highest chance of keeping that good function for as long as possible. It's really important when you're choosing active surveillance that you're happy with the team who are carrying it out. And different teams across the UK and elsewhere do do things slightly differently. So I will talk about what I do in my practice, and that's in the NHS at UCLH and then privately at King Edward VII. So the first thing is to check that a man is suitable for surveillance, and that's looking at the MRI if it's not one that we've done, looking at the biopsy and making sure we're not concerned that there's any high risk prostate cancer that we might have missed. If, for example, we see an MRI scan with an area that looks like it wasn't biopsied and might contain some higher grade tumour, then we might recommend another biopsy, but we don't usually. We then talk through the process of surveillance. So that will be with a blood test every three to six months and an MRI scan at the beginning of the first year. And then after that, based on the PSA testing, and biopsies are used if the MRI scan changes and there's an area that we're worried about, or if the PSA is steadily rising and we can't explain it on the MRI. The next thing is to check whether somebody is psychologically suited to surveillance and whether they've got any anxiety about the cancer or the cancer progressing. If people do have anxieties about that, and they may well, then we talk through the actual risk of their cancer. I usually show people their cancer on the MRI if it can be seen. And if it can't be seen, that's an even better sign because it means it's lower risk. And we look at the biopsies and make sure there's nothing high grade in there. That allows us to be really reassuring. So I run one of the largest MR led surveillance programs in the world. And we know that for men with Gleason 3 plus 3 cancer and no cancer visible on the MRI, they've got around a 10% chance of things changing in the next three years. The men who would be most likely to see some change are those men with some Gleason 3 plus 4 prostate cancer, and we can see it on the MRI. And even for those men, there's a one in three chance that things will change in three years and a two in three chance that things will stay stable. So I'm also keen to know how people's function is at the moment and what their future plans are, not just in terms of urinary and sexual function, but if they have any plans for children in the future, because some men will choose surveillance in order to complete a family naturally and then go on to radical treatment in due course. Once we've worked out that we're all happy with the plan, we set in the um, process for getting the PSA tests done, and that's sometimes with the GP, sometimes at the hospital, set the date for the next meeting and the date for the next MRI scan. One of the things that we found, and I've just completed a large international consensus on active surveillance with experts from across the US, Canada and Europe, 
is that something that's really important to men on surveillance is to be able to be in contact with their clinical team when they've got any worries or concerns. So again, we always make sure that they know the route through to, to get to us if they've got questions that arise before the next appointment. So if surveillance is something you are considering, I would really encourage you to talk to your team about it, to ask if you're suitable, and if not, why not, and to see what the process of that surveillance is.